Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mia and today we're going to talk about top tips for beginner artists. This video was made for people of all skill levels, however, it is especially geared towards beginners. I know when you're a beginner, drawing and painting can be really daunting and there's a lot of different parts to it, so hang tight and I hope to cover many different things to help you level up your own skill. I've been drawing since I was about six years old, so I've picked up a little things along the way that I'm going to share with you today, okay? Tip number one. It's okay okay to use references. Oh my god, I just wanna shake everyone. Many beginner artists struggle with the idea of using references. When I first started drawing, I was on DeviantArt. Before you scoff, okay, I was a kid. Back on DeviantArt, you would have someone upload this amazing art piece and they would be like, it would just be so good. And you're looking at it like, this is insane. I wonder how long it took them. How did they learn to do this? And then you check the artist description and it says, just did this in 45 minutes without any reference. Hope you like it. Ooh. <sighs> Not only is that probably bullshit, but it also perpetuates this negative idea of using references, which is so toxic. Guys, you actually have no idea if that person traced, you have no idea if they use references, and you should not base your own art and where your skill level should be off of someone else's progress. Why should you use reference? You should use reference because you don't know exactly how everything in the world looks. It's really that simple. Tank! Arr! Tank! Like if you have to draw a tree, maybe you've seen enough trees that you have the idea of what a tree looks like without needing a photo. Mm. However, I mean, do you know all types of trees? Can you think of all of them off the top of your head? You might have a vague idea of what they look like, sure, and you can certainly recognize it if you saw it, but can you draw all the details off the top of your head without looking at a photo? Probably not. And the same goes for if you're drawing people, anatomy, animals, whatever. You should really look at real life references, or even better, real life models. I mean, but that would require you to actually go outside, so. So now that we've established you should use reference. How often should you use reference? Literally all the time. All the time. Unless you're so good that you've built up your mental library of how everything you wanna draw looks and you just have that, that encyclopedia of knowledge in your brain, you don't need to look at anything else, then that's fine. But that comes after years and years and years and years of practice and training. What references should you use? Try to avoid overexposed photos because you won't be able to see the lighting that well. Photos with filters on top of them because it hides so many real details. Instagram or magazine photos since those are so heavily edited and the anatomy is completely changed. Try to use references with different types of lights and colors and try to also draw from real life objects. All right, tip number two. <laughs> Practice your fundamentals. Let me introduce you to a little thing called gestures. Oh, what is gesture? Boom, 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 boom. Gesture is doing really quick, loose sketches, basically. It's like you're trying to capture the movement of life into a very quick image. Gesture tends to show more emotion and more action than regular drawings, regular anatomy studies. What else should you practice? Anatomy. Practice your anatomy, trust me, okay? Even if you love anime, that's totally fine, but you should also do real life studies of real life people. This video is not going to go over how to improve your anatomy overall, as that's a topic on its own. Some general tips to get better. Draw all sorts of people, draw all sorts of weights, draw young people, old people, men, women, children, etc. Focus more on your weak points. So if you really love drawing breasts, babushkas, you know, then that's great, but maybe you should try to draw some hands sometimes too, you know. <laughs> Another thing to practice is value. Value refers to the lightness or darkness of your color, white being the lightest and black being the darkest. Practice your light and shadow. This will really make your image pop, okay? Something else that everyone should practice is composition and perspective. So composition is about how an image is sort of arranged. It refers to the placement of all of the elements of the image, how they're arranged in that space, and it influences how a viewer sees the artwork. A good composition makes a piece look more dynamic, whereas a poor composition makes a piece look awkward or boring. Perspective, however, refers to the technique of making a flat 2D image look 3D. It's the technique that makes an image look more real. Perspective is definitely its own topic and video in the future, but right now it's actually my weakest subject. Brrr. 
basically you're going to want to work on your gesture, anatomy, your value, and your composition and perspective. Those are some great areas to start and some really good keywords for you to get your search in going on the Google. <laughs> Tip number three, find what inspires you. I am inspired by anime, by anime girls specifically, and by Pokemon, different silly things like that. Maybe animals inspire you, maybe landscapes inspire you. There are so many different websites you can go on to get some inspiration. So an example is if you're into landscapes, you can check out mapcrunch.com, and this was actually shown to me by an artist named Maddie. This website is great for finding high quality landscapes to reference. The fact that you can move the camera around makes it even cooler and personable. Another thing is you can check out different art styles. There's so many different art styles you can go for. Even anime art styles are far more broad than most people give it credit for. Here's a bunch of different art styles along with some terms to get you started. Tip number four, try out different mediums. You may find something super surprising if you try an alternate medium, one that you never thought of trying. I consider myself a digital artist and that means that I primarily work on the computer. That doesn't mean that I don't occasionally dabble in traditional artwork. Every time I attempt traditional art, even if it's disastrous, it helps me to break out of art blocks sometimes, which is a really good side effect. So here's some examples of traditional art that you can try. So work, color pencils, watercolor pencils, watercolor, gouache, oil paint, Pastels, acrylic paint, palette knife, painting, sculpture, printmaking. There are honestly so many possibilities and we'll be here all day if we list it. That does not mean that you cannot get unique results with digital art as well. And if you're primarily a traditional artist, you can get a really cheap tablet and attempt some digital art. It also might help you break out of your art block. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can buy super cheap supplies from Walmart, Amazon, or the dollar store. Tip number five, follow artists on websites. Following artists on other websites is a fantastic way to get inspired, get exposed to different art styles and break out of art block. Comment down below, by the way, if you want a video on how to break out of art block. So here's some social media websites you can follow artists on. Reddit.com. Reddit has everything. Not many people know this, surprisingly, but it's also a great place for artists. DeviantArt.com. I don't know how many pros are still using DeviantArt, but it is made entirely for artists of all types. Instagram. Instagram is one we're all familiar with. There's so much artwork on Instagram and participating in challenges is a great way to grow. Tumblr. This one isn't doing so hot right now for good reason, but it still does have a fairly active art community. Pinterest and Facebook are great for art too, especially browsing, but to be honest, I don't know much about the communities there. Twitter. Twitter has a very active art community. There's some niches that are doing pretty well. Tip number six, doodling. Doodling is such a healthy habit for all artists of all skill levels, honestly, so doodling just means to draw without any regard to how good the piece is, basically. You know, you're not worried about ruining it. You don't even need to look at reference, anything like that. If you want, you can sit on the train and doodle passengers. You can sit on the couch and doodle your dog. Whatever you want to do, doodling is a very healthy habit for encouraging your creativity and keeping your brain creative and thinking of different processes and solutions is hot in here. Tip number seven, work on things you're not comfortable with. Now, I'm really guilty of this one, of staying in my comfort zone. I really like drawing anime girls, so I typically draw only anime girls. However, it is good to break out of your comfort zone every once in a while. Now, I do really strongly believe in drawing what you love, and maintaining art is something that you look forward to. However, it is a good idea every once in a while to just break out of that comfort zone, draw something that you're not super sure about, and maybe you'll actually end up liking it. A good way to break out of your comfort zone is to participate in challenges. Now, there are different challenges that go viral on social media every couple months. There's Mermaid, Inktober, Draw This In Your Style, Draw This Again, and that's just to name a few. I actually run a challenge with my own community. We pick a new theme every two weeks, and then we draw pictures from that theme, and we show them off on my stream on Twitch. So if you're interested in that, you can also check that out in the description. It doesn't have to be my challenge, but I recommend you join a challenge somewhere because it forces you to break out of your typical style. Style. Tip number eight get critique. Now this one is a little bit scary for some people, right? Especially when you're just starting out, you feel like everything is wrong. You don't necessarily want feedback because it's like, I already know this is messed up. You don't have to tell me. I know it's scary. It doesn't have to be. And sometimes you may know that your piece is a little bit messed up, but you might not know exactly what's wrong with it or exactly how to fix it. And that's where getting feedback can be so valuable because someone can tell you those solutions. So critique basically refers to the idea, this looks great 
great, but you should try darkening your values. To make it more interesting, I would recommend moving the figure over here, and maybe if you studied your anatomy a little bit more, the overall image would be stronger. So it doesn't have to be mean. It is very rude if you post your art piece and someone offers unsolicited critique. Unsolicited feedback is like super rude. <laughs> but every once in a while, you should try asking for feedback yourself. Hey, what do you guys think of this landscape? Hey, what do you guys think of my color choices? Also, if you put those things in your description when you post your image, it really encourages your audience to engage with your piece more in the first place. There's forums dedicated specifically to critique on almost every social media website that we covered earlier. Also on my own Discord server, there is a critique channel as well. That being said, I do really think that if you're accepting critique, it really helps to also give critique sometimes. If you look at other people's artworks and when they ask for feedback, try to give them some tips to improve, it actually really helps you with your own improvement. It kind of trains your eye a little bit and the eye is very important in art. Tip number nine, be patient. This one is really hard. This point ties into something that's brought up very often to me. Someone comes into my stream and they say, how can I get better at art? What they really mean is how can I get better fast? And to be honest, there's not really a way you're gonna get better fast. And anyone who tells you that is kind of lying to you. If I say, wow, watch this video and you'll improve quickly, it doesn't mean in two weeks you know, you'll suddenly be a master. It means that it'll be quicker than if you didn't have these tips at all. The only way you get better at drawing really is by drawing a lot. You can know all the best tips in the world, but it doesn't mean you'll get better if you don't actually know how to apply them. You'll get frustrated. You'll plateau. You might even get worse at some points. You'll keep going and you'll see improvement gradually and you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, I, I'm totally different now. There's no magic phrase I can tell you to get better at drawing fast. There are tips, sure, but Every tip is just a guideline and it takes years to really get there. So if you're patient and you're loving and you wait, good things will come, I promise. Plus, if you're not patient, you get frustrated and you're really gonna end up quitting more often than you should and that's not what we want. Okay guys, tip number 10. Tip number 10 is to draw every single day that you can. Okay, so I know you might not actually be able to draw every day, but get as close to it as possible. Really just draw as often as you can. I promise you'll see so much improvement. Every time you get a chance, you just pull out your, your paper and you start doodling, you know, on the bus. <laughs> So as we touched on earlier, doodling helps you find your style. And if you draw every single day, the more likely you are to stumble upon your own style. You're gonna find what works for you, what's most comfortable. You're gonna figure out what mediums you like, what you enjoy drawing, and all that's gonna happen just a lot faster. If you're trying to get good, and you're trying to get good fast, obviously the more you draw, the better you'll get faster. <laughs> okay, so it's really simple, but honestly, not every single day has to be like a dedicated sit down and you need your sketchbook and your tablet and your oil pastels and you gotta have all your references up. Not every day has to be like that. And maybe some days you sit down for three hours and you study feet. It's really up to you. There is no right or wrong way to do it. Trust me, it's better if you draw every single day that you can. You will not regret it and you you will end up a much better artist for. And if you look back at where you were in the beginning of the year versus the end of the year after drawing every day, the difference is insane. Insane the improvement that you'll make, okay? Thank you so much, guys. Cosmo would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Thank you for watching and have a If you guys would like to see any updates as to what I'm doing, you can check my Patreon, my Instagram, and my Twitter. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful night, day. Thank you.